Hello everyone, alright. Um, I'm back on the train of cooking after yesterday's episode, or tomorrow's episode, or whichever episode I'm on, or talking about. About me making blue pasta, and actually eating it, and uh, having that experience. Today we're gonna do something a little more normal. Today we're going to be just making banana bread. I have bananas that need to be used, and also it's my new favorite obsession. I had my pie phase, and now I've got my banana phase, and also the more excuses I have in life to hold phallically shaped objects in my hands that can also double as guns uh, are probably like, you know, this is the best excuse I possibly have is to make some banana bread. So let's do it. Um, we're going to start off with three bananas. I love bananas. I don't know about you, but I'm absolutely a, a monkey for bananas. I love bananas. But uh, today we're going to be basically just composing my typical go-to banana bread at the moment. I actually have an experiment that I'm going to perform today, which is using semolina flour. This is a more fine flour from what I've noticed. And I don't know how it's going to aerate itself compared to another, like, flour, like an all-purpose flour. So it's going to be worth an interesting play. Again, no idea how it's going to work. I've never tried it before, so hopefully it'll be good. I'm also going to crack one egg and put it inside of the mixture. And I'm just gonna mash these contents together and then add the other uh, desired ingredients. Alrighty, I have some roughly mutilated banana contents in here. And I'm also just going to add a boatload of cinnamon. I have no measurements for cinnamon. I don't believe in measuring for cinnamon because I love cinnamon and it also loves me. I say that because I love when inanimate objects love me. It makes me feel like I'm more loved than I currently am. Uh, and it also feeds the ego perfectly. And again, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I need to also get a haircut if you haven't noticed. I've got the emo swoop going way too much now. So basically I'm half blind every time I get in my car to drive. Um, it's starting to get dangerous, I think. I'm definitely gonna have to bandana it or something, but I think I am gonna cut it like, cut my bangs, and also cut my, uh, hair. I don't know what I'm doing with it yet, though. I, you know, usually, okay. I have a guilty secret, basically. Usually I just get drunk and cut my hair. Uh, but I think the last time when I did it, I just didn't do a very good job. And when I say get drunk and cut my hair, not hammered. But definitely I am tipsy enough to make poor decisions. So, I definitely need to cut it. But for the time being, we're just gonna be rocking it, like the typical. Ooh, I've got a better idea actually my people. We'll just do a bun. A big old bun on the top. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, this will be perfect. What am I talking about? This is how I'm going to be the best cook in the kitchen. Is we're just going to have one of these. Do we need it? I don't know. How's that? Okay, well now we're back on the bandwagon. This is the bun that we're gonna be rocking with today. Uh, it looks very formal. We're gonna vanilla it. I'm just gonna put some globals of vanilla in this. I don't measure. Bad, I know. It's an addiction, I don't measure. Um, but I, this is probably a teaspoon or so of salt. Put that in there. And then we're gonna do about three quarters of a cup of coconut oil, and I will measure this, I promise. We're gonna do three quarters of a cup of coconut oil, but it's hot in here, so the coconut oil has melted, and it shouldn't affect it too badly, but I just wanted to point that out. We have liquid coconut oil. Um, so I'm gonna do three of these quarter cups. And she's golden, she's great, we love it, outstanding. Now, the only thing we really have to add at this point is the leavening agents, the flour, and the sugar. So we're gonna add the sugar first, because we love being sweet. We're going to do a half cup of liquid sugar. I use maple syrup, you can use honey. Um, you can also just use all of like one normal sugar or something, but I feel like the combo adds different, you know, I don't know, textures, flavors, whatever. So we're gonna do half a cup of maple syrup, and that's probably gonna be like actually less than half a cup because I'm out of maple syrup. So probably about a quarter cup of maple syrup, and then the rest is gonna be all just like regular sugar. But you want, like, about a cup's worth of sugar in the total recipe. Um, or about a quarter cup to compensate for the lack of maple syrup. And then another half cup. And a little bit more because we love ourselves. Don't tell. 
generally speaking, like, I find that if it's too sweet, there's no going back, but if you make it, like, not super sweet, then you're just gonna be able to appeal to the not super sweet aromatics of banana bread, and then also be able to kind of add sweeter things to it. And there are some recipes that are kind of weird that I've noticed online, like, not even the sweetness level, like, the sugar level, but it's when there isn't enough flour to compensate for the amount of sugar. Like, there's more sugar in it than flour. Or another thing that confuses me is when there isn't any salt in a recipe. Or, like, you know, anything like vanilla or, like, cinnamon or something. Or some kind of spice or cocoa or some kind of thing like that. But the number one thing I always see, for some reason, and this is why I don't trust certain recipes online, it's salt. If there's no salt in the recipe, I don't trust the recipe at all. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be dramatic, but I'm, I'm being serious when I say it. I really just don't trust it. So I'm gonna get baking powder. I'm gonna use about one and a half tablespoons. And also... I don't have baking soda right now, so I'm just gonna use a little bit more. Um, this is a third of a cup, so I'm gonna do five of these, I think. I'm not really too worried about, like, having it be perfect, honestly. Good enough. And then I'm just gonna mix it and see how, see where I'm at with it, like, see if it needs more. It very well could need more, like, you'll kind of notice, like, based on the viscosity. But I've never really used this flour before, so I really don't know what it's gonna do. I'm gonna do one more, like, third of a cup of flour to make it two total cups of, like, flour in general. And then I'm gonna try and bake it and see where we're at with it, you know what I mean? I don't know if it's gonna, like, work out. Like, I don't know if it'll solidify or not. It, it should. It should definitely, like, solidify, because there is carbohydrate in here that's going to, like, expand with the leavening ingredients and all that stuff. So, I think it'll work, but I've never really used this before. Preheat your oven to 350. I usually never wait until it's preheated, which is bad. I'm just gonna get a little bit more of this coconut oil and pour it on my hand. My hand that is still stained from the last episode's spirulina antics. And I'm just going to, like, you know, apply it liberally to this pan. I've got my mixture. It's a little bit loose, but I think it'll be fine. And then I'm going to just pour it into my pan. So it's in the pan, and to top it off, I'm going to put walnuts. I usually do it on the top because like, then if they sink in, they're not gonna stick to the bottom and they're not gonna burn, which I personally hate when it comes to baked goods is when there's like chocolate or nuts in something and then it just sinks to the bottom. And I've heard that you can coat them in flour and do all kinds of stuff, but I usually prefer to just let gravity be my best friend and then put them on the top and then if they sink in, they're probably gonna get like halfway through before things start like rising and stuff. So I'm just gonna do that. Um, I don't pull my punches with my nuts. I love nuts, so... And they should stay on top, to be completely fair. I don't think they're gonna be doing too much moving around. But yeah, I'm just gonna put a load of these all up and over it. Bam! Banana bread, my people. So I'm just gonna bake this, and I don't really count times. I'm gonna guess it's gonna be anywhere from, like, 20 to 40 minutes. You just kind of have to assess it based on, like, the levels of moisture and the power of your oven and stuff. But, like, half an hour, I guess? I don't know. So there's that. Now we're just gonna wait for that to bake up and we'll uh, see the final result. All right, my people, so I've finished the bread and I'm also in the midst of doing another recipe here. Fits, naughty poo-poos, naughty poo-poos, go be gone out of this room. Recipe totally 100% worked. Smells great, looks great. I will use this in the next tea party. If you would like to join me for a tea party, I will critique this food. So yeah, uh, look forward to that. We're gonna have a tea party series on this channel. But anyways, that was the video, my people. I hope you all enjoyed. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Do you like banana bread? Is it your kind of go-to recipe? Because I find it's one of the easiest and most versatile recipes. You can add chocolate, peanut butter, nuts. You can do nut-free. You can do basically whatever you want. And the other thing is, when I was in high school, it was my number one recipe. Banana bread was always one of those things that I would make all the time. And it's super simplistic. Never one of those problem breads. And on top of that, if you have overly ripe bananas, it's the best way to get rid of them. But yeah, tell me what you think in the comments below, and I will see you next time, my people. Slater.